Hello, this is Yogesh for 7000 again and I'm back with another interesting topic in Vedic Astrology today. And today we'll be talking about the dangerous aspect of the planet Mars. <clears throat> okay, and uh, today's discussion is once again just to remind you that it is coming directly from the ancient scriptures. And it is not uh, any kind of a figment of imagination of any modern day astrologer, okay? So, uh, the reason why I'm making this video today on Mars is pretty simple. Mars is an extremely, extremely malefic planet. That's one. And and also, it, it does a lot of damage to the birth chart as far as marriage is concerned. That's why there is Manglik Dosha, okay? So we know that there is Manglik Dosha which destroys the marital happiness completely or it could be fatal to the spouse uh, if somebody has a Manglik Dosha and we know that Manglik Dosha is, happens when Mars is placed in the first, the second, the fourth, the seventh, the eighth, and the twelfth house from the Lagna, and according to some astrologers, they also consider uh, this position of Mars from the moon sign as well, although there's a dif difference of opinion on that, but generally we know, and in certain cases, certain astrologers do not take the second house placement of Mars also as a Manglik Dosha, but uh, Generally people from South India, they consider the second house placement of Mars also as Manglik Dosha. So even if we don't take second house, Mars is placed in the first house, the fourth house, the seventh house, the eighth house and the twelfth house is Manglik Dosha. Which destroys marital happiness, happiness completely and like I said once again, I'll repeat that you know people from the south also consider the placement of Mars in the second house as a major Manglik Dosha. And then of course in the birth chart we see that based on the placement of Mars we see the aspects of Mars and um, you know people who are familiar with astrology they'll very very conveniently they're going to tell you that okay well look at the position of Mars where the placement of Mars is and then look at the seventh house aspect of Mars so it is going to affect in a malefic way the seventh house from where Mars is placed and it is going to affect the fourth house from where Mars is placed and it is also going to affect the eighth house from where Mars is placed once again you know this there is a general consensus in modern day astrology that Mars look at Mars placement that's where the malefic effect is and as far as aspects are look at the seventh house aspect the fourth house aspect and the eighth house aspect from where Mars is placed okay so it's pretty simple and they do their chart analysis based on this as far as Mars is concerned okay but today I'm gonna discuss something very important which has been mentioned in the ancient scriptures which most I mean there are certain good astrologers who are aware of this principle as well but then there are most of the astrologers do not consider what we are going to discuss today okay so according to the ancient scriptures the aspect of planets has been given to us it's as a standard rule is not just the first as the the seventh aspect the fourth aspect and the eighth aspect okay it's not just fourth seventh and eighth uh, as per the aspects of mars which we practice but there are additional aspects as well okay now a lot of people uh, probably may know about the additional aspect but the major point which i'm going to try to make here today is that what has been mentioned in the ancient scriptures and what has not been practiced recently or what is not being practiced recently is the fact that the ancient scriptures specifically mention the aspects as a one foot aspect a two foot aspect a three foot aspect and a full aspect okay once again this is how the aspects have been categorized which is coming from the ancient scriptures a one foot aspect a two foot aspect a three foot aspect 
and a full aspect now um, I don't need to tell you that a one foot aspect is a minimal aspect a two foot aspect is a little more intense aspect a three foot aspect is more intense than the two foot aspect and the full aspect is the most intense aspect and by the way we're just discussing about the planet Mars and we can address other planets in our forthcoming videos so based on this categorization the aspects are one foot aspect which is the lightest aspect two foot aspect which is a little more intense than the one foot aspect the three foot aspect is a little more intense than the two foot aspect and the full aspect is the most intense aspect okay and in sanskrit language it has been mentioned in the ancient scriptures as one foot aspect is called ek charana it's called charan in sanskrit so one charan aspect two charan aspect three charan aspect and a purna that's a sanskrit word which is a full aspect okay purna aspect is a full aspect so as far as the planet mars is concerned it has been very 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 clearly mentioned in the ancient scriptures and this is coming from authentic ancient scriptures that mars aspects the seventh house with one foot okay mars aspects the fourth and eighth houses from where it is placed with a complete complete or a full aspect okay so what mistake we were making is that although we were considering the aspect of mars to the fourth house from where it is placed as a full aspect is absolutely correct we are also considering the eighth house aspect of mars from where it is placed as a full aspect which is also correct but what mistake we are making here is that we are considering the seventh house aspect of mars as a full aspect in general terms what we see day-to-day -day astrologers practicing mars seventh house aspect is not a full aspect it is an extremely extremely light aspect so when you do a chart analysis please please do not consider mars aspecting the seventh house from where it is placed as a full aspect consider it as the least intense aspect so that's point number one point number two which also a lot of astrologers are making a mistake is that there is an additional aspect of mars which is the aspect of the third house and the tenth house from where mars is placed okay and that is a two foot aspect so try to understand this very clearly the seventh house aspect is not a full aspect it's the lightest aspect and is just a one one foot aspect but on the contrary and two aspects which we are ignoring are the third house aspect from where mars is placed and the tenth house aspect from where mars is placed as a two charan or two foot aspect which is more intense than the one foot aspect of mars aspecting the seventh house from where it is placed okay first the mistake which many astrologers modern day astrologers are making that they are considering the seventh house aspect of mars as a full aspect that is not true second they are not even considering the third house aspect and the tenth house aspect from where mars is placed which is stronger than the seventh house aspect okay so when you do a chart analysis please take this into consideration now the third point the third point is that mars also has another two aspects and those two aspects are at, when mars aspects the fifth house and the ninth house from where it is placed and you'll be surprised that that is a three foot aspect okay so we're not even considering modern day astrology we're not even considering mars aspecting the fifth house and the ninth house from where it is placed although it is stronger than the seventh house aspect and it is stronger than the third and the tenth house aspect it is aspecting 
with three feet okay or or three charan as it's called in sanskrit which is much more intense than the seventh house and the third house and the tenth house first of all the third house aspect and the tenth house aspect is stronger or intense than the seventh house aspect secondly please always when you analyze the chart especially in terms of mars the aspect of mars aspecting the fifth house and the ninth house aspect is a three foot aspect which is much more intense than the seventh house the third house and the tenth house okay and then finally we know the full aspect is the fourth and the eighth house which is a full, full house aspect okay so that makes the analysis of the astrological chart of a person in relationship or in reference to the planet mars completely different you know you may be considering the seventh house as a complete aspect and you will probably tell somebody that okay well mars is aspecting the seventh house from where it is placed very intensely but that's not true it is not it is just very lightly aspecting it similarly you may be forgetting the third and the tenth house aspect which is stronger than the seventh house aspect similarly you may be forgetting the fifth and the ninth house aspect which is extremely intense although a little less than the full house aspect so i thought this was a very very important point which i should bring to your attention once again it's just coming directly from the ancient scriptures and while analyzing birth chart you should take that into consideration Hopefully you like this video and in the meanwhile I will recommend subscribe to my channel and check out my website there is a link below and I will see you with an interesting topic in Vedic Astrology in my next session very soon. Goodbye.